ladies and gentlemen rise of kingdoms just revealed a third new commander for this upcoming commander release cycle it is none other than john hyun hun, hun yadi john hun yadi he sounds like an auto manufacturer but anyway john is a brand new engineering versatility and support commander so we're getting two new ranged commanders and one new leadership commander which tends to be the case with these new ranged releases and man i gotta say we are still in this ragnar prime release event here and we've gotten three new commander reveals while this event has been going on it's actually crazy anyway let's take a look at the skills but first what's going on guys cheers okay his active skill is called raven's wings it has a 1000 rage requirements and it is a single target damage skill it says deals ranged direct damage to a target troop with a damage factor of 900 or 1600 if the target is not within melee range which is interesting because if you guys remember we just talked about the new release of Steven the third and his active skill was the opposite he dealt a small amount of range damage but a higher amount if the target was within melee damage here we can see with John he is dealing higher damage at range and more damage if the target is not within melee range 1600 is a pretty high damage factor hit at range to be honest which is really interesting here we see for the next three seconds this commander's troop deals 20 percent more ranged skill damage really interesting stuff here so really you might consider running him as the primary to steven however steven's got the skill tree which uh, arguably would help your um john deal more damage i feel like we're, we're dealing with such basic names we've got steven and john for this upcoming release like these are the most basic names i've ever heard anyway moving on to his second skill it says this commander's siege units gain 30 percent attack and when their troop is in ranged mode it gains rage 15 percent faster okay this is like exactly what you would want from a ranged commander right like you want to pop your active skills as much as possible and attack is what's going to help you deal as much damage as possible here so we love to see that third skill is called shield of belgrade it says whenever this commander's troop uses an active skill it has a 20 percent chance to deal extra range direct damage to its current target with a damage factor of 300 chance to trigger is increased to 40 percent if the target is not within melee range so this guy is really going to pop off if the target can't reach him okay if he's sitting in the back you can't get any closer to him he is going to deal his maximum amount of damage looking at his fourth skill it says this commander's troop deals 40 percent more damage to troops with less than 50 percent units remaining oh my god he's literally built to pick off the weak marches out in the field and the expertise says it is a boosted version of shield of belgrade belgrade sorry if i mispronounced that whenever this whenever this commander's troop uses an active skill it has a 40 percent chance to deal extra range direct damage to its current target with a damage factor of 400 and gain 30 range chance to trigger is increased to 80 percent if the target is not within range okay so it it doubles the chance to trigger basically uh which is kind of insane and it increases the damage factor and it gives you extra rage and that's it that's the entire kit i feel like this is a very vanilla beat stick for ranged skill damage it just deals lots of range skill damage and you deal even more range skill damage you've got just attack there's no defense there's no health here and that's pretty much it you have the instant proc extra damage factor here with a little bit of a rage engine on not only the second skill but also on the expertise here as well um, this guy is going to be made for picking off those weaker marches out in the field and because of that he's probably going to get really good reports because as you guys know if you target marches that are under 50 percent they're yellow and especially marches that are red you are going to farm kill points so really interesting stuff here if we think about you know is he going to be in part of one of the best pairings in the game i think you know obviously for range you're looking at two different ranged marches right you've got your cordoba march which is going to stay being that smite damage army that you've been using whether it's with margaret primary or whether it's with gajamata primary one or the other typically works well with cordoba as the secondary and then most likely you would run steven and john together 
or you would run Steven with Bobber. So let's quickly take a look in game at what Bobber is actually doing to see if he's a better use than Bobber. Okay. So Bobber has again, a single target damage hit, but it is reduced by 50% if the target is not within melee range. So if you are far away from your target, you're going to be dealing 1,200 damage factor. If the target is within melee range, which is quite close, by the way, then you're going to deal 2,400, which is a ton. Okay. That's a ton, but the majority of the time, the target is going to be farther than melee, melee range, in which case John is going to be dealing more damage because he has 1600 damage factor. Plus you deal more ranged skill damage during that time. The only downside to this is that if he is the secondary, then the only time that the bonus from John's active skill is going to apply to any type of damage on uh, Steven's kit would be his expertise instant proc damage here. Okay. That's a 20% chance when dealing range skill damage to deal another three target hit of range skill damage. Okay. So this would be the only part of Steven's kit that is buffed by this part of the active skill. Again, if John is the secondary, if John is the primary, then of course you have all this damage from the active skill on Steven that you're going to be dealing extra, I guess, what is it? 20% more ranged skill damage. So that's definitely something to consider jumping back over to Bobber here. I'm curious to see if his kit is out competing here. So we've got, um, it's all attack and defense and ranged normal damage. So your white numbers are going to tick, uh, for a little bit higher. However, you know, John has more attack in general. So that's also going to bring his um, uh, you know, his white numbers up slightly as well. So we'd have to test and see which one is actually going to be dealing more range, normal damage. Looking at the third skill, you have a 500 damage factor instant proc here with Bobber. And on the fourth skill, you have a ton of health here, a chance to gain a ton of defense and bonus damage expertise gives you even more attack and 50 rage per second. So really interesting stuff here. If you were already running Bobber and you swapped him out for John, what you would find is that your damage factor on average is going to be a little bit higher, right? Because assuming that the target is not within melee range, which is the goal of ranged units, right? Hitting them from a distance, then your active skill damage factor goes up by 400, right? 1200 from Bobber. It goes up to 1600 with John and you get this nice little bonus here. You get twice as much, uh, well, almost twice as much attack. I guess Bobber, if he's expertise gets the extra 10%. So that brings him up to 25% total. Um, but so you're going to get a little bit more, uh, attack here and extra rage gain here with uh with john again bobber's got the rage gain on the expertise here 50 rage per second for the next three seconds it is a five second cooldown so you only get it once per skill cycle but still it's something it looks like this shield of belgrad which is the you know it's upgraded for the expertise here it says um it has a 40 percent chance to deal extra range damage to its current target and gain 30 rage chance triggers 80 percent if it's not within melee range i wonder if this will stack with the active skill on steven right because this is going to not only deal the damage but it's also going to deal additional damage every second for two seconds what if these additional damage pops will also have a chance to trigger the expertise here if that's the case then you probably want to run john primary unless like the advantage of the skill tree is so high that it outweighs the fact that the synergy here with the active skill order would be amazing, right? It seems like you would want to do John primary, Steven secondary, strictly if you look at just the active skills, right? It makes sense. Raven's wings increases the damage of the active skill for Steven the third. And again, the expertise here could cause additional, like you, you might be able to pop this multiple times given the damage over time from Steven. And also given the fact that there is no listed cooldown here, which is really, really interesting overall, really interesting. I mean, now we officially have six ranged commanders in the game. So you could run three ranged armies, right? So you would do Gajamata with Cordoba. They're both smite damage, their synergy there. It makes the most sense given that you are looking to build three marches. And then you would either do, you know, just the Margaret with, with Bobber, like you've always done. Well, or is the original pairing, I should say that's the original ranged commanders. And then you would run John with Steven together. I think there is definitely some synergy here with the active skills. If you put them in the right order. The other thing you could do would be to switch the um, Steven and Bobber, right? So you could do John and Margaret together, and then you could do Steven primary 
with Bob or secondary, right? And then for John, you would do, I guess, John primary, Margaret secondary. That would be my guess. Um, those are kind of like the only two routes I could see people going if they wanted to run three ranged marches, right? So again, Gajamata Cordoba, Margaret with Bomber, and then John with Steven, or you would still do Gajamata with Cordoba. Then you would do Steven primary with Bobber secondary, and then you would pair John and Margaret together. They, they have the same trees here, the same talent trees, both Margaret and John. So really, I, I guess it would come down to the active skill synergy. And I guess you would want to do probably John primary, Margaret secondary. Um, that's my best guess. So those are the two routes that you could go. I would say if you wanted to run three ranged marches, but the real question is, is John any good? Is he anything special here? Because we've already seen like big single target hits from ranged commanders, especially like I would say Cordoba is obviously not a single target hit, which makes him even better than the rest. I think his AOE farms extra damage which was what makes him shine more than anybody else i think that you know when we look at the stats on john i think they're a little bit low but they are what you want right they are attack and extra rage you have instant proc damage here from your active skills um and 40 percent more damage to troops that have less than 50 percent is actually insane right that is actually insane so if you are like actively choosing the right targets this march with john will absolutely just delete those marches that are in red i mean you're just going to pop them it's no question but is he so much better than bobber like if you were only going to run two marches right two ranged marches i would say you run the gajamata with cordoba or you run the margaret with cordoba however you've been running that already and then your second march you know if you already have bobber expertise you might just run steven with bobber because you want that skill tree right and bobber already has some instant proc damage he already has some rage regen on his expertise um and his damage factor is decent it's not as high here but he has almost as much attack on top of the fact that he has some health as well on the fourth skill and the chance to gain defense and bonus damage right so i mean i don't i'm not completely convinced that if you already have bobber is john an absolute must have i'm not convinced i think steven might be a little bit more interesting strictly because of the skill tree and the fact that He's doing so many different things here um, that, I mean, he's just doing a little bit of everything, right? A little bit of everything. And I mean, he's stacking like an extra 30% attack. He's got 35% defense. He's got the extra March speed. John has no March speed, by the way, right? So he's going to be one of the slowest commanders on the field, just period. He's got attack. He's got literally nothing to boost the speed that he is moving on the field, right? So I don't know if I'm convinced that John is so much better than Bobber that you would go for John if you're only running two uh, ranged marches, right? And by the way, I'm not really seeing people run more than two ranged marches. Um, obviously, right now, it's because that's all there are. You can't run more than two, really, unless you're using like random other commanders. Um, this would be officially you can run three dedicated marches. But the question is, should you, right? That's the question. And um, again, John, to me is not in so insane that like he's breaking the game and oh my god like it's all over for people who didn't get range oh my god john is new meta john is like no i don't think so i really don't i think i think god frankly gajamata and cordoba i think we're a little bit more interesting of a release than these two new commanders um that's just you know my my instant first impressions from these two new commanders i think that they will be quite strong but I don't know if they're gonna I don't know if they'll have as much of an impact on the meta as Cordoba did um you know again I think the extra 40 percent to wounded units and the rage engine here I think this really can be devastating but I don't know if it's like on the same level as Cordoba in my mind at least and for full transparency my most recent video where I talk about uh Steven is my worst performing video my worst rise of kingdoms performing video in the last like three weeks maybe even more i mean it depends on if you consider this unboxing video which was very different i never really do something like that 
um, besides that you have to go back to this video here which it says three weeks ago but that was actually literally uh four weeks ago it was actually four weeks ago today so I don't know why it says that and if you look at Chiskel's channel as well right just as an example he's the biggest rise of kingdoms youtuber um it seems to be the case that his ranged video for uh Steven performs it's performing a little better than mine but it it also doesn't seem to be getting as many views as his other content and you know even still like even if you compare this to Philip I mean I guess the views for Philip are still a little bit low as well but my follow-up video for Philip is you know definitely getting some attention I mean 17k views is decent for me and so people are at least considering investing in Philip they're considering him as a commander to get whereas I'm not sure people are feeling the same way for these new ranged commanders right um and that's not like my opinion that's just me using some very simple basic data that's available to us and we can see that same trend across channels like just and it just seems like the community in general um still isn't fully on board with ranged right I think over the last year range have come a long way um mostly in part to players like Mr Siege who have invested heavily into these commanders and proven that you can get really great reports from them and you know even in my own kingdom I'm seeing more and more players get their hands on some of these siege marches even with purple gear just to have one ranged march for certain scenarios where they can't really do anything else I think that's completely fine um but all in all the community as a whole still doesn't seem super excited about ranged uh commanders and honestly I'm I don't this this release doesn't change that for me I was kind of hoping it would to be honest with you like deep down I was hoping that these range commanders would be so broken that I would have no choice but to invest in them and I wouldn't be happy about it um, because it is very expensive to invest in a whole new troop type but I was kind of hoping that like maybe they would be so insanely good that I'd have to get them um but at the end of the day um I am happy at least a part of me is happy that these two new range commanders seem strong but they don't seem must have um, and I think that the reason for that is, and I think, you know, a lot of people kind of give me some pushback because I, I tend to be a type of player that, that points most players towards investing in primarily murder ball marches, right? Primarily melee marches, that being cavalry, archers, and infantry. And the reason for that is not really, I mean, obviously I, I prefer that type of gameplay. I prefer that style of fighting, right? I think it's more interesting to operate a five army or even a three army murder ball. I think that's more fun. It's more dynamic. You're moving around the map. It's really cool. But from a, from a gameplay perspective, I, I prefer that personally, but also from a game fundamentals perspective, you need murder balls and you don't need ranged commanders. If that makes sense, right? Like when you think about fundamentally, how do you win kvk how does your kingdom and your alliance win a kvk it is through map control it is through owning sections of the map burning enemy flags with rallies and defending your flags from rallies and you can only do those things with strong field presence okay if you are a ranged player uh, then you know better than anybody that if there is not good field presence for your kingdom then your ranged marches are going to get targeted immediately right and so ranged like being able to operate ranged commanders is kind of a luxury that is granted to you by an effective open field performance and by an effective murder ball right so like fundamentally ranged commanders will always be a an additional supplemental thing on top of melee murder ball armies uh, not strictly be out of preference right but strictly based on how rise of kingdoms works from the ground up you cannot win a kvk without an effective murder ball right so if everybody in your kingdom all decided all together that they were going to run three ranged marches and two melee marches for example then your open field would get absolutely demolished by kingdoms that run traditional murder balls right like they would have basically free reign across the map to build and burn whatever they wanted right and you can't really control a at least I've never seen the ability for a kingdom to control a field entirely with ranged marches right you still need murder ball marches you still need melee marches and I think like rise of kingdoms was built from the ground up with that being the most principal fundamental core gameplay right and I don't think that that has changed here and you know these commanders look 
very strong from a range perspective but they don't look so insane that it's like we throw everything we've known about the game out the window for the past six years i don't think that's the case i think ranged is going to remain a supplemental additional thing that don't get me wrong will perform super well for your account if you want to go that route but it still looks like it will remain to be an additional um you know sort of supplementary extra thing on top of a strong murder ball like a strong murder ball is this is not my opinion right you need a strong murder ball to win kvk open and shut case that's just how rise of kings works and range marches can absolutely supplement that but they can't replace that right i hope you guys can understand what i'm saying here i don't think a kingdom would perform very well if everyone in the kingdom only ran ranged and i know that i'm kind of taking this to the extreme right like this is the extreme example but i'm using it so that way people understand why i've arrived at the conclusion that i've arrived at when it comes to ranged commanders so um at the end of the day you know if you're only running a single ranged march is this the best pair that you could be using i'm not really sure i i am starting to think that the best pairing is still probably gajamata with cordoba um obviously you'd have to consult with mr siege and other like really dedicated siege um players to know exactly what the best single best pairing is going to be um and if you want to run two pairings this might be part of that second pair to be honest with you because it does seem quite strong especially for picking off those weaker marches you're going to get insane reports for yourself um for me however this doesn't really scream must invest I don't know if I need this pairing and I mean we'll have to wait and see you know if the next set of cav commanders is garbage then maybe I look into going into range and if I do I don't know if I'll get these commanders I'll still go probably with Cordoba and someone else and that's just how I'm kind of looking at this I think this is really interesting it's obviously very exciting for range players this is a brand new set of commanders that they get to play with and pop people on the open field which is awesome um and at the end of the day the real question here for me is how do we get these commanders right because of these three commanders we've got Steven we've got John and we also have Philip who is the leadership commander all of them are versatility commanders so that means all of these are built for open field fighting and we know historically that one of them is going to be on the mightiest governor and one of them is going to be on the wheel and one of them will probably be from an event right and if that's the case well then how do we get these commanders right also it seems a little bit weird to release a new event commander when right now we literally have an event commander here already right so it's like I I don't know it's it seems like there's just a is it just me it feels like there's a lot of commander this this to me is the first time that I've ever played rise of kingdoms that I feel like we're getting a lot of commanders in the game very quickly right that's been a topic of debate for a long time here and I've always broken out the spreadsheet and proven to you guys that actually no we get a, a new commander cycle every 70 days on average that's always been the case for the past six years and that's never changed sometimes it's 56 days sometimes it's 84 days and you know that's pretty much it but that's been the consistent schedule for the entirety of the game uh right now however with Ragnar Prime coming in the game and also three new commanders on the horizon instead of two and with all three of them coming by the end of the year I guess according to uh well actually I don't know if they listed that anywhere but I I'm almost positive they're coming in December I I feel like I read that somewhere but maybe I'm wrong anyway it's early in the morning for me so don't hate me but right now does feel like the first time ever that we're getting a lot of new commanders all at once um and so I hope that rise of kingdoms can balance this in a way where it doesn't feel like it and truthfully you know until we see test results come out between Steven and John and Philip I don't even know if any of these commanders are must have commanders anyway right like that's the funny part is that all these commanders are coming out and you know I think like the last must have commander in my opinion was um Herman Prime and I think right now you know there's a good chance that you're going to want to get your hands on Ragnar Prime I think he's quite good as well but like everything else in between and including these commanders I don't know if we if you really need it right which is the funny part so they're releasing all these commanders and like we don't need or care about pretty much any of them which I think is definitely a problem because it it, it sets this um weird perception that like there's all this power creep and all these new commands and, re and really like you don't Kind of need any of them which is a blessing for free-to-play players right which is awesome um so that's kind of where i'm at that's what that's where my head's at um it feels a little bit weird that we're getting so many new commanders at the end of the year and you know like they don't look like they must have commanders but um i think for range this is good i think that you know again range having more options is good for them and i will benefit from it greatly because my kingdom players in my kingdom who can run seven marches 
they're going to pop off with this, which again, does help the open field quite a bit. So I am excited for the range players here. This doesn't look so insane that I need to get ranged commanders still to this day. I will probably continue holding out. Hopefully you guys understand my um, analysis of how open field fighting actually works and how ranged can be an important component to that, but they can't be the only thing there. And that's why I feel like they'll always kind of be secondary to murder ball field marches. You can let me know what you think in the comment section below. And of course, while you're down there, let me know what you think about John himself. Self. what do you think about John do you think that he is spectacular is there something about him that I'm missing his kit looks very vanilla right it looks like just more damage extra damage and additional damage extra rage attack that's pretty much everything that I'm seeing here um, but you can let me know what you think about John in the comment section below let me know what you think the best commander pairs are going to be here and while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel it kind of helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to notify the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video because we are so close to 80 000 subscribers with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on the i will talk to you guys again soon peace